all the people are partners, not employees. And this is an important one because with, with employees, um, uh, employer, uh, employee, there's a parent-child relationship that you cannot escape. There will always be a parent-child relationship if there's employment. Now, you, there's, a, there's a lot you can do to mitigate that. But within Nestor, we have just completely uh, eliminated employment so that we don't have to deal with that. When you show up in Nestor, you are a partner and you will be compensated using uh, different types of shares. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on that in a second. That's that's part of uh, how the for-purpose enterprise also works. Right, a bit of framing. Um, so th this is about the, the, what dynamic equity is. So part of the for-purpose enterprise, and it's in, it, it gets a bit detailed, and it, I hope it's not too confusing, but I think it's important to call out because it really informs how our compensation system works. So I touched upon that uh, elimination of employment. Um, so how then are people compensated? Uh, that's pretty much with different equity, uh, with different um, share versions. And there's four that show up. Um, and there's A units, which kind of uh, equates to uh, stock options. There's P units, which kind of equates to getting cash. There's D units, which is a, a debt instrument. So you can say, hey, will you get paid out in in uh, in debt, which will you get paid in cash uh, down the road, which is interest bearing. And then there's C units, which is equity. So th those are the four different units uh, we can use within Nestor. Right now, we only use uh, A and P units. So we only pay in cash or in stock options. Those other two will start to show up later. Um, and I'll, I'll show you in our sheets how we use those tools because what it allows us to do is a really flexible way to, uh, to start to pay out in options if we don't have the cash. So again, this is, this is a wonderful flexibility that shows up if you don't have employees with a, with a fixed uh, income. Um, you can start to really play. Hey, if the cash is not there, you have an alternative. So you can still fully compensate when people show up with what they have brought. We really want to honor that. Um, but if we don't have the cash, we have now an, another tool to uh, to pay for that. And for startups, that's, that's hugely important. Because if you have people on payroll um, and you can't pay that, uh, you go bankrupt. And then you're not protecting purpose. Uh, then the the personal needs of employees go, uh, are more important than purpose. And we're all about purpose here. So <clears throat> what are the principles for our uh, uh, compensation plan? Um, so I, I touch upon this time and time again. I'll reiterate that um, we protect Nestor's purpose. And um, we call that like a, a perpetual treasury. So with with Nestor, if you really want to serve purpose, you shouldn't go bankrupt, right? <laughs> because purpose is not served by that. Um, and what that means is we have a couple of policies where if uh, money dries up, um, we start to we have real clarity on what it is that we're going to uh, stop spending cash on and start spending options on, so that there's full transparency to all that show up what is expected and when they're going to get money and when they're going to get stock options so that they can accommodate that uh, for their, in their personal lives and their personal needs, right? Say, hey, well, it looks like in two months, I'm not going to get any cash. I really need to start taking some actions elsewhere in my life to, to care for that because you're a partner. You're not bound by a contract that says you need to work 40 hours for Nestor. You have complete freedom to do so. That has implications for Nestor and the, and the person, uh, but we're really on a, uh, again, a, a peer relationship rather than a parent-child relationship where the employer takes care of the employee. Um, another principle that's really important to us, offer a livable and safe baseline for all um, so that uh, the conversation is not, uh, how can we pay as little as possible? The, co the conversation is really, hey, what do you need to be able to show up and give your gifts uh, at Nestor so that uh, you and Nestor can both thrive? Right, so full transparency and, and care for each other rather than um, how can we get the most out of you? Everything has to be rooted in governance so that anyone and everyone can actually propose changes to it, right? So it's not one person that has the authority over others. We wanna eliminate that, that, that power dynamic. No negotiations, it has to be fully transparent so everyone can see 
everything for everyone. So if you have tensions with that, again, you can process that because it's rooted in governance. It needs to honor market rates. Um, and that's a tricky one. Like we're, we're a software company. So, uh, you know, the, so we want to have very experienced software developers. Uh, currently, they can earn up to 20K a month somewhere else. Is 20K USD. So that's really expensive. Uh, so we can't just say, hey, um, 7K is a livable baseline for everyone, which it probably might be, um, because that's not that's just not realistic. And then people are not going to show up if they can get somewhere else. So we have to honor market rates and deal with that. And we need to be adaptable to honor personal needs. That's another important principle. We've had some cases where people say, hey, I have a big bill come through. I just need a bit more cash. And then to, we need to have a system to deal with that. That doesn't mean we always say yes, but it does mean there needs to be a place to process that. Um, and we here is through governance, right? So not one person, but through governance uh, or, or consent processes to, uh, to take that into account. So we had two cases where somebody had an increased need for some cash, and then we actually made um, exception exceptions for, for their personal needs. I think that's important uh, to also allow. So those are the principles. I hope I'm not going too fast. I just I realized there's short time, so I'm going to go through it. So what then does the compensation model actually look like? Um, so we have a, a, a five and a half K USD baseline for everyone, right? So if you are um, uh, working for, for Nestor, filling a role within Nestor, the baseline is five and a half K a month. That is where we have set, that's a, that's a level baseline for, for everyone, uh, almost all over the world. You know, that, that might get tricky if you live in the center of uh, San Francisco of New York, but for most of the world, that's still very livable and and a wonderful way to work. And and just for, for clarity, uh, with Nestor, we're a team of eight, and we live uh, in Europe, North America, South America, and uh, New Zealand. So we're, we're all over the place. So geographically, that also gets interesting. Um, and then on top of that, you can earn more based on the competencies that you get to express within Nestor. And now I'm starting to dive into details of, okay, how have we set that up? So whenever somebody uh, shows up, they bring their gifts to, to uh, different uh, portfolio of roles that they fill within, um, within Nestor. Um, and Nestor dictates, again, through governance, uh, what are the competencies that Nestor needs to fulfill its purpose? And that's an ongoing process. We look at that all the time. Currently, I think we've got seven, seven or eight competencies that, where we really say, this is what, what we need right now. So they're, they're fairly generic. We don't want to get too specific, uh, specific right now. So these are the seven we need. And then we have an assessment where we plot everyone on a, a rate of zero to three on the, those competencies. And there's a monetary value um, associated with that. Um, and you can have all seven competencies, but we only pay for the, the, the top two so that we don't really go out of whack, right? I, I'm personally a bit of a generalist, so I score reasonably well on most competencies, but that would mean I would earn way too much. And we don't, we don't want that. We want that to be in a, in, in a range. So we say the top two is what we compensate you for, um, which kind of keeps it all uh, within acceptable range. So what that means for, for Nestor, we, we compensate on a full-time basis between five and a half K to I think 13 and a half uh, USD. So, so that's that's kind of where the, the range that we're working on based on, on these competencies. Um, Nestor sets those rewards, but again, through governance, right? If anyone has a, a attention with it, they can process that. And only competencies you, you use are compensated, right? So there needs to be part of the assessment is awesome. You are, um, uh, you are you've got development competencies, but you don't fill the developer role. Right. So then, then that's not being compensated because it really needs to be uh, benefiting Nestor what you bring. Um, so that's an important part of that assessment. And then we have a process for that assessment. Uh, and we, we just got that started. That's still what limited. Uh, and there's lots of room for improvement. And let me touch upon that in, in a second when I go through that. What? 
Um, now I would just want to start opening these uh, the sheets and the actual compensation model so we can have a look at that. But before I do so, are there any questions? I see something in the chat. I don't see that. So um, if there's anything, just unmute yourself and, and, and drop your question, uh, then I'm happy to 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 dive in. I would just want to see where My the energy... My question was answered, so it's fine. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Let me see. see if you see something else. Right. Um, jet out of the way. Sorry. Um, there. Uh, can you guys see the sheets here as well? Yep. Yep. Okay. So where where I want to start is so this is uh, Nestor's dynamic equity sheet. I have made a copy and I changed the names. So it was interesting. We did a consent decision around, should we be fully transparent about exactly the compensation for each person? Um, and we decided against it because there were some people that weren't comfortable. They, they didn't mind sharing their compensation to this group, but they minded potentially a transcript being, being available online. So that's why we choose transparency fully internally uh, but not necessarily fully externally. And I think for purpose that that, that makes sense. So the numbers are all correct, but the names are, are changed a little bit. So what you see here, so this is uh, a big uh, sheet, but what's, what's uh, important here is the bottom where we see that's the, the, the slice of all of Nestor's shares in effect. So these are the different people that have different uh, parts of the pie of all of uh, Nestor's shares, and that changes over time, right? So if somebody st comes in and does some work that is not compensated for it, they earn A units, and those are those are options, and that's kind of the slide, the the pie that you see here. So James, Oliver, and Simon, they uh, founded Nestor together. They started all with equal uh, slices, and then they started working at different levels. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, not always being compensated. So only a dollar that is not compensated earns you a stock option. That's a, that's how it works. So it's a different compensation uh, uh, vehicle. And the nice thing about that is, uh, first of all, we honor the risk, right? So if you don't get paid cash, but you get paid a stock option, there is a multiplier. So for every dollar that you have, uh, that you don't get paid in cash, you get currently one and a half dollars in stock options. That used to be two, the risk has reduced a little bit, so we lowered the multiplier. The other thing is if you show up and we have we have two investors in Nestor that showed up and put money down. Um, if you put money down, you actually get currently a two and a half times multiplier because money's more scarce. So, uh, and then they start to earn in that way. So it's a really wonderful and flexible way to deal and honor investment um, looking back at what people have brought in rather than predicting what the future will be like. Because conventionally what often happens is people start a business and then they say, cool, it's um, like we started, like one third, one third, one third, which is a prediction that doesn't make any sense because we don't know what the future future will be like. So it makes a lot more sense to say, hey, we're just going to start at zero and we're slowly going to uh, earn in um, into this business based on what we have invested in it, time or money. And this is such a wonderful way to work with that. So because it fully honors reality without having to uh, value what the company might be worth as a whole. Um, so and here's the different uh, units. Of, of, I'll leave the numbers for what they are. But what I call money units, that uh, is what these are all A units people have earned um, based on the money they've brought in. Value is IP that's brought in because we actually have a bit of a history where Nestor was organized, structured differently. So we came in with working software and we gave that a certain value and that's the IP we gave a value. And then there's the time. Uh, so how much uh, time has been invested that has not been compensated. Um, so that's different for each person. Um, and then there's the, the P units that have been paid. So what happened? So these people have earned that. You just track that. You don't get equity for that, uh, and that results in a percentage of uh, of Nestor. And at one point, we'll shift this this pie of options to C units, and then that will be actual equity 
that will be uh, rooted in uh, in uh, Dutch law because we're a Dutch uh, uh, limited liability uh, that we then convert uh, into, unless we change that prior. So that's how that's set up. And then we, we actually track that on a monthly basis, right? So there's massive sheets where we say, uh, what should somebody be compensated? Uh, how much have they actually got? And how many A units do they then get for, for each month? Which triggers the question, what should they be compensated? I'll go to the other sheet. Again, if there's questions, by all means, uh, unmute yourself and just throw it in because then I can hear that. So here is the... I, 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 I do too. So just a question. So, so so how how much are shares worth? How do you how do you value the shares? Yeah, that, that's that's wonderful. Uh, the um, nothing <laughs> because nobody nobody knows, right? So we're we're an early stage startup. Um, and what we want to avoid is the entire valuation conversation because that's nobody knows. Nobody knows early stage what what a business is worth, and that's why we look differently. We look at what money have you invested, and we compare those. So hey, I've I have invested um, ten grand in unpaid income. That's my investment. Well, I invested five grand of unpaid income. Then we have a two to one ratio in the number of options that we hold. And that's how it builds up. And what we have is a policy when that that pie converts to uh, to equity. When that happens, then we'll, we'll get to a valuation moment. But this is all saying, hey, this is pre-valuation. We have no idea what it's worth because it's all promise. And uh, 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 but there's not, you know, there's not a ridiculous amounts of revenue. That's how an early stage uh, software company works. Um, there's some revenue. But if you do it based on revenue, the valuation will be a lot lower than the investment warrants because we've all been working on this for years. That's just how software works. You probably know. Yeah. Um, but but, so, but, so, but, it, but if, if somebody wants to put some money in, like one of your investors, sort of very yeah. early on, obviously it's higher risk and later on is less risk. So at that point, you must sort of make a call as to what the, the price, that, what, what how many shares they're going to get and you said they get 2x or whatever but they're still yeah. it's, it needs to equate to real life money at that point doesn't it yeah. uh, not not really it does you can do that that calculation in your mind but we do the same thing so we just say when you invest time that you don't get paid for uh, you get a 2x initially if you invest money that you don't get paid for you get a 4x that's the only uh, sum that's there um so uh, the number of shares you get is not based on the valuation. It's based on the investment you make. So we compare investments rather than value of the business. And that, that takes a little bit of uh, 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 shifting your mind on how the investment world works. But we have, so we have two investors that have stepped in on exactly those, those principles. And that's, that's a wonderful game to play. For us, it was really important that these investors knew um, self-organization, distributed authority really well, and, and they do. So uh, we're really happy with the investors we have on board right now. Um, just want to check, because I only have a few minutes left, right, for, for my uh, um, uh, time frame. Do I, is that correct, uh, Adrian? I've got to build till 35? Yes, three minutes to the end. Yeah. So then I'll, I'll, what I'll do, I'll briefly touch on um, the sheet on the, the actual compensation. So what you see here is um, the the full salary amount that we would get to when people would be fully paid. But well, currently we don't have that. Currently everybody gets um, only 40% of their full allocation uh, because we have a policy that says if our runway is below nine months, we slowly start to reduce uh, the amount we pay out to people, and currently that means we're at forty percent. Except for Lawrence, he's at fifty-three. He's got personal needs that are higher, so he proposed I would like that to be higher because my life requires it. Um, and then we had a consent decision. Yeah, that's fine, awesome. Um, we'd love to carry that with you. Um, and these commitments is uh, how much uh, commitment do they show up? Right. So that's. That's roughly uh, full-time employment, right? So uh, James is at 90%, mostly working full-time, and then Oliver at 60 and somebody at five, right? So that, that really changes uh, how much you pay out as well. So we also have a policy that says if you work less than 25% of your time at Nestor, um, 
if we drop below that nine months runway, uh, you don't get any uh, cash. You would all be stock options. So there, there's really flexible things you can do with the policy. Um, and I would do briefly want to touch on the competencies because I think that's an important one. So here we have laid out what are the competencies that Nestor needs, the different levels. We actually had names for them. We reduced that so we can really look at the, uh, rather than saying, I feel like a master, know your level one, two, three, and we describe what those levels mean with uh, a clear description. Uh, and we go through first a self-assessment. Everybody says, this is where I land. Up, land. And then we have an, an assessment meeting where we invite uh, the accountable role the, with a skill tracker role, a competency tracker role that facilitates that, invites the person and invites um, the, uh, the leader of the circle that most or all of those roles of that pe person are in. That's multiple circles, uh, multiple uh, circle leads that show up and uh, together they go through that process and consent on uh, a skill assessment. Um, and that is how we do the assessment for now. Um, it's also where a bit of pain still lies because it, that can be better and it can be more elegant um, than, uh, than what we do right now. We want to in, involve uh, a bit more of a peer review. And maybe that leaves me with, um, there's more detail there, but I just don't have the time to really go through it. So what's next is we want to introduce the, a celebration rit ritual. So take an element of our compensation where each quarter we come together, we get a bunch of virtual coins in the middle of the table that everybody gets uh, a share of that they can give to somebody that they really want to celebrate. Uh, and we attach a part of our compensation to it. Um, we really look forward to doing that. We haven't done it yet, but that's where we want to go. Oops, microphone. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jose. Yes. Uh, I have, I hope we'll meet soon again, all of us. Yes. Time is very short in this conference. Is yes, right? there a spreadsheet or a template of it available? I, I, can, I can make some of these available, yes. Um, uh, maybe just reach out to me and then I can share some of them, okay. them afterwards. Right. Super just. Really nice thank presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it.